A blank canvas. It's equal parts inspiring and intimidating because anything is possible. Where do you begin? How do you sort through all of your options? And how do you create a vision for your place? Hello, I'm Matthew Encina. In this video, I'll share the process of designing my new studio space from scratch. This is the first episode of a longer series, so stay tuned till the end for details on that. Before I begin, I want to thank Milanote for sponsoring this video. For the past few years, I've been working from home, making content and doing client work. My media and maker business, Mod Musings, is evolving and growing, which I'm grateful for. But working in a small space has become increasingly challenging. I've developed a bit of cabin fever, always confined at home, and I could use a change of scenery to spark new creativity in my work. While my home office has served me well, I've simply outgrown it. So a few months ago, I set out to search for a modest office space in Los Angeles. I was looking for a place that was under a thousand square feet, had lots of natural light, was in a quiet area, and had interesting architectural character. After weeks of searching on LoopNet, which is like the Zillow for commercial spaces, I found a diamond in the rough located in Northeast Los Angeles. A recently updated industrial space built in the 1920s, this checked off all the boxes for me. So I put in a lease offer and waited to hear back. Confident I would get the place, I began my design process, which follows these steps. First, I write down my goals and intended use case for the space. Second, I developed a vision for what it could look like and feel like. Third, I measure the space, understand the constraints, and create a floor plan. Next, I explore ideas and layouts in sketch format, then move into layout and design in 3D. Lastly, I define the details, what to build, what to buy, and finalize my materials. The goals and needs for my studio are to have two desks to work on, a dedicated area to build things in, and I need tons of storage for my camera gear, tech, and tools. Additionally, the whole office should be photogenic, so I have multiple backdrops for filming content. Because the projects I work on always change, I need the layout to be flexible. And lastly, I want a small lounge area to relax, think, and have a nice cup of coffee. With my goals in mind, it was time to dream up a vision for the studio. I wanted to come up with a concept that would warm up and complement the industrial aesthetic of the space. A place that felt calm, inspiring, and productive, so I could do my best work. I began by pulling together a mood board in Milanote of inspirational images I found. If you're unfamiliar with Milanote, think of it as a digital project pinup board. You can drop in links, images, videos, and type out notes. You can group things together, draw connections between things, and organize everything in boards to help you visually collect and curate your thoughts. I'm using Milanote on this project to craft the vision of the studio, so I have a clear direction when I build out the space. When I go through this process, the first round usually involves clipping anything that catches my attention that I feel would be relevant to the project. I usually explore lots of ideas, and when I see something, I use the Milanote Web Clipper tool to send this to my mood board, which I can sort out later. Once I've exhausted my search, I sort through my findings. I edit down and curate the best references that capture the feeling I'm going for and fits the goals of my space. What I end up with is an overview of the aesthetic and unique qualities of my vision. This way, I know what I'm building toward and have a reference to go back to as I continue to make decisions throughout the project. My concept for the studio, the Zen Workshop. A calm and creative space that balances minimal office aesthetic with a hard-wearing workshop. Designed as a modular open space filled with bright light and natural materials. With a design direction established, I roughed out a few potential layouts based on the general measurements I got when touring the studio. In this layout phase, I block out sections, trying to figure out which configuration has the best flow and makes the best use of the space. I usually take it a step further and sketch out ideas for potential solutions and furniture as my mind is in problem solving mode. I find working with paper and pencil is the best place to start. You can iterate quickly because the sketches don't feel precious and you can explore a ton in a short amount of time. A tip here, I like using grid paper because it helps me sketch accurately, especially when drawing floor plans. I assign one grid box to represent one square foot, but you can use any unit you like. Once I have a layout I'm happy with, I move my two-dimensional ideas into a 3D space. 
This helps me get a better sense of how everything would feel. Lately, I've been using the Shaper 3D app for 3D blocking and the design of my woodworking projects. It's simple to use and especially great if you plan to build something from the models you create in it. Shaper 3D is sponsoring some of my upcoming blog content about the design process, which I'll share at a later date. But for now, you can check out the link to the app I've left in the description for you. One thing I've found useful in the 3D process is to drop in a human model or box that represents your height. That way you can get a relative sense if surfaces and shelving will be accessible and comfortable to you. The biggest challenge I faced when working through the designs was making sure that the minimal open space was still practical to work in. And on the other end, making sure I didn't sacrifice aesthetics and make it look like a garage. Design is a balance of form and function. Finding that perfect tension between both is what takes the most time to create something elegant and useful. After two months of back and forth with the landlords, we finally closed the deal and I got the keys to the office. Now I had the time to go in and get detailed measurements of all the nooks and crannies of the space. I updated my floor plan and the 3D models to be more accurate, then finalized my materials and color palette. With my design now complete, I'll give you a walkthrough of the space and take you through my ideas for the studio. When you first walk into the office, to the right, there are many pipes exposed here. So visually, I felt this would be an appropriate place to build my workshop. It'll be basic at first, a place to hold my tools and where I'll build the furniture for my office. Eventually, it will develop with me should I end up doing more woodworking or even exploring 3D printing in the future. For now, I'm going to start with setting up a sawhorse table so I have a place to cut down materials and a large surface to work on. Then I'm going to build a pair of rolling carts out of 2x4s and plywood to hold my power tools and help me move my materials around the shop. I plan to build this in a way where they can connect together to form a larger table or break apart to be used separately. While the design of these carts are simple, there's plenty of room to add functionality to them with shelves, drawers, and other accessories. I'll customize them as needed. On the other side of the room, there are these tall factory style windows, the main feature of the space. Here is where I plan to build out my office and primary storage area. Against the left side of the room, I'll be placing two large desks on wheels. One will serve as my main desk. The other is a flex desk that can be used for shooting desktop content or a place for freelancers if they ever come into the office. Above the desks, I think it would be a great place for some extra long shelves to display decorative elements, add extra storage, and be a surface to clamp camera gear to. On the wall with the windows, I have these unusual cavities underneath them. So I decided this area would be great for storage of my camera gear, tech, and miscellaneous things I need for work. At first I thought I would just tuck some rolling storage underneath to give me the most flexibility, but then I explored options for creating custom built-in cabinets, which offer way more storage and have a cleaner look. Then I thought, why not both? So I came up with this idea for a hidden rolling gear cart that would appear as part of the built-ins, but could be pulled out completely to roll around the studio. I've never built anything like this, so we'll see if I can pull it off. Moving over by the sink, I have another narrow space I had to design around. I was already looking for a place to build a small coffee station, and I think this would be the best place since it's the closest to the water source. So I'll continue the storage here with a partially covered shelf unit that's dropped lower to make clearance for my coffee accessories above it. Under the sink, I'll add a small mini fridge for chilled drinks and leftovers. Next to the sink is this beautiful open wall. Because of how the light hits it throughout the day, always soft and indirect, I think I'll use this wall for shooting. If ever I'm capturing products or people, this should have the best natural lighting for that purpose. And since most of the things in my studio will be on wheels, I can easily roll things over here if I want to build a set to shoot against. To control the lighting, I plan on installing motorized blackout shades on the windows here. Some ideas I had for future upgrades might be to install a backdrop seamless roller in case I want different backgrounds, or another idea could be to use this wall for a projector. I'm not committed to anything yet, so for now, I'll just leave it open. One thing I thought would be important is to have a place to relax when I want to take a break. So I want to create a small lounge area. I initially started with a traditional couch here, but I didn't like the feeling of everything being boxed in 
and pushed to the edges. It didn't flow. So I came up with an unusual solution for this area. To visually anchor the space, I'll lay out an 8x10 foot rug. This will give the room character and help with the acoustics. For seating, I plan to get a set of round ottomans here to break up the boxiness of the whole space. The main one is large enough to fit several people on it when I have guests, I can lay down on it for naps, or my dog Chewy can completely take over it as his bed. In my research, I fell in love with this idea of having some sort of tree or large plant as a centerpiece in the room to give it that calm zen vibe. So I plan on having a large planter here and smaller plants by the windows. A small tip here, if you're ever designing anything, grouping things in clusters of threes always works well. To take it to another level, make sure to give the grouping contrast in either size, height, or material. This will give a nice rhythm to the group. Lastly, by the entrance of the studio, I plan to have some kind of display area here. I'm currently working on a few product collaborations, and I plan to do more in the future. So I was thinking this might be a good place to showcase some of the physical goods and projects I'm working on. I may create a giant pegboard and display case, but this is the last thing I want to build because I'm still figuring it out. And that ends the tour of my design for the studio. I'm in no rush to commit to a full build out yet because I'd rather take my time and work in phases. I'll build the essentials first while keeping things modular and flexible as I assess my true needs for how to utilize the space. This is the first episode of a longer studio design series on this channel. In the next episode, I'll take my finalized design and begin to build out my workshop and set up my office. Subscribe if you want to follow along. I want to thank Milanote again for sponsoring this video. You can try Milanote for free using the link in the description and start your next creative project. If you have any questions, ask and I'll do my best to answer. With that out of the way, it's time to get back to work.